Uh, I'm seeing one level homes be in more demand and there's just no supply of them. Uh, and, and, you know, looking back the last 10 years, I'm not sure why builders didn't get ahead of this trend because the baby boomer generation, uh, you know, is, 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 was really leading the way on this one level living and they're getting out of their two stories and into one level homes as they age into their, their new phase of, of housing. Hi, I'm Wade Hansen. I've been selling luxury real estate in Minnesota and Wisconsin for over 23 years. My entire career has been spent protecting my clients from misinformation and unethical practices by those not looking out for their best interests. This podcast will give you the raw truth about everything real estate so you can make solid, informed decisions about the biggest investment of your lifetime. This is the Raw Real Estate Podcast. Hey, thanks for watching. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the luxury housing trends I'm seeing in uh, in 2022 and as we move into 2023. Um, in my 23 years in the real estate business, I've seen obviously a lot of things change in just general housing trends. But in the luxury market, I've never seen those change so dramatically as I've seen through the last two years of COVID. It's really changed a buyer's or a homeowner's uh, perspective of what a home means to them. And the, the biggest change that I've seen in my 23 years, or actually in the last probably two years, has been the need for outdoor entertaining spaces. And I'm guilty of this as well, um, but I can tell you that if you look back into the early 2000s when I early got into this business, um, you put a pool in for 100 grand, you'd be lucky to get 15 grand back out of that investment, right? Today you put a pool in for 100 grand, you're probably getting 125 to 150,000 back out of that investment today. And that's because the immediate need and the immediate, uh, the want for immediate gratification out of a pool. Uh, and outdoor entertaining spaces like outdoor kitchens, patios, decks, uh, just the ability, ability to um, entertain and use those spaces uh, at home because of what COVID has done to us the last two years and prevented us from uh, perhaps traveling or going to cabins or going uh, out of the country or to other destinations. It's just, it's brought more people together and I wanted those those outdoor entertaining spaces. You know, and in, in Minnesota, you're ob obviously using those three, maybe four months out of the year. So it's always been, in my mind, up until the last two years, just a, a really bad investment and a really negative thing. And it's just been flipped on its head. And it's a, it's a really positive thing and been a great investment. Now, that may change uh, as, as we uh, continue to phase out of COVID. Uh, but right now, uh, pools, outdoor entertaining spaces, outdoor kitchens, patios, uh, it's been... Um, probably the, the hottest trend in luxury real estate right now in my market. I can only speak to my market and the dynamics in my market. I can't speak to what's happening in you know other parts of the country. Um, but right now, in addition to the outdoor entertaining spaces, the pools, privacy has become a big thing. Uh, I've seen more and more people move out of the city and even move out of some of the suburbs into more rural areas of my marketplace and wanting, you know, an acre, two acres, 10, 20 acres, whatever that might be, um, just to have some privacy and a little bit of room to roam. Uh, so that's been an interesting dynamic that I've seen change. Uh, and I've seen land become worth more than ever before. Uh, in addition to privacy, you know, being, being on maybe some waterfront or having water on your, on your property has been... Um, a really hot trend in the luxury housing market. Having large garages or large outbuildings on that land has been uh, a popular trend. Um, for whatever reason, I've seen more and more people have three, four cars, uh, you know, have toys, have things that they want to put into these large outbuildings. Uh, I've seen people convert large outbuildings into home gyms. Uh, convert large outbuildings into uh, you know home office spaces, man caves. Uh, so it's been interesting to see how um, a simple pole building has now been converted into 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 something that uh, is a more usable space and um, you know more functional and more desirable. As far as the house itself goes, you know. It, it's been, it was interesting. It's always been this open concept, and everybody wants open concept and places to entertain. I think that's still a pretty solid trend, but I've seen people gravitate towards wanting a little bit more separation in homes because of COVID. Um, and I think the main living space and the kitchen space still remains 
uh, the, the, the desire still remains to have that open. But as you get into some other spaces in the home, you're having dual office spaces and some separation for some private office spaces. Uh, having some place maybe to put the kids while you're entertaining adults, um, you know, whether that be uh, in a lower level or a loft, something like that. I'm seeing some, some uh, people trend and some luxury trends towards uh, having some separation with uh, with family, which is interesting because, uh, you know, it used to be about having everybody together in one space. And now I think uh, COVID has put us together for too long and, 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 and now we want some separation. So um, that's been, been interesting. Obviously, home gyms with everything that's gone on with COVID has, has become popular. I know my, myself, I put in a home gym and haven't uh, had a gym membership in over two years. So that's really, really been a, a popular trend. And one of the more interesting ones right now um, and again, I'm guilty of this, so maybe I'm a trend center. I don't know, but it's been one level living. I'm seeing more and more families want uh, just that main floor living. And it used to be you either had to have adult children or no children at all to, to buy what I call a ranch or rambler style home to have all of your living amenities on one level. Um, now I'm seeing even younger families, uh, they're okay with putting their their children, younger children, in the lower level, so mom and dad have their own space on the main level. And again, it's created that separation um, where kids can make their noise, do their thing, play and tear up the basement, and mom and dad have a nice, clean uh, space uh, on the main level. So that's become an interesting trend. Um, and I think the demand with it for that is so high, and the what happened the last decade was we didn't build enough of those homes. So anybody that's living in a one-level home right now is getting a real premium for their home, even in the market that we're in right now as things shift. Uh, I'm seeing one-level homes be in more demand, and there's just no supply of them. Uh, and you know, looking back the last 10 years, I'm not sure why builders didn't get ahead of this trend because the baby boomer generation, uh, you know, is, 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 was really leading the way on this one level living and they're getting out of their two stories and into one level homes as they age into their, their new phase of, of housing. So, um, but I think that's probably become more desirable and, and more popular even with uh, the younger generation. So the one thing that probably hasn't changed uh, through my 23 years of doing this in the luxury business is people want turnkey homes. They don't want a fixer-upper. They don't want any sort of a project. These are busy professionals, uh, business owners, doctors, attorneys. Uh, they don't have the time to work on projects. So if you have an upper bracket home that you're selling, uh, to try and sell it as is and pawn off some of these projects on the next buyer, it's going to cost you. Um, it's going to cost you time and money. You're going to sit on the market and you're going to get a lot less for your home by having a, what I call a fixer upper or a project uh, in the upper bracket. These buyers are, uh, are, are wanting something that's just move in ready. They don't want to put a, a lick of paint on the wall. They just want to move in and, and start living. So uh, turnkey homes just, it's, it's, it hasn't changed in my 23 years. So if you're a, a homeowner that's considering selling in the next maybe year or two um, in the upper bracket market, I think it's really important to align yourself, number one, with an agent right now, even if that's a year or two down the road, I think that's okay. I'm having clients call me now and we're starting to, to prepare their homes for the market in the next 12 to 24 months. Um, simple things sometimes just, I mean, obviously paint and carpet are the, the two most important things right now. Paint and flooring, I should say. Um, making sure that those are turnkey and, and, and ready for the next buyer. You know, we're not going so far as knocking down walls, but just making sure that, you know, things like kitchen cabinetries, um, appliances, you know, those, uh, the demand for good uh, upper bracket luxury gourmet kitchen appliances. You know, as people, uh, are spending more time cooking at home. Having a good appliances in the home right now is really important. So upgrading those, I think, can be money well spent. Um, if you're going to spend money anywhere and you're on a budget, kitchens and bathrooms are always uh, are always a good money to spend it on. And I say kitchens and probably master bathrooms or your owner's suite. Those are probably the two best uh, returns on your investment. So if you're thinking of selling, I think it's important just to start the process now because too many people wait and then they're, they're in a position where we just don't have the time and resources to get those projects done before going to the market. So if you're thinking of selling in the next couple of years or simply working on a project at home and want to know the, the kind of return you're going to get on that investment, feel free to have me out. We'll have a, a nice, confidential, casual conversation on, on how that's going to improve your home's value and uh, what you can maybe do to, to make the right decisions to uh, have it appeal to, to buyers in the future. 
Feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help any way I can. Thank you for listening to the Raw Real Estate Podcast. If you have any feedback for this episode or want to suggest a future topic or even possible guests, head to wadehanson.com. There you can get links to my Facebook and LinkedIn pages. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel to see the video version of this podcast too. Again, thank you for listening to the Raw Real Estate Podcast. We'll talk soon.